So today I'm going to be working on the rest of my Owl Vans um, B2 carrier. So I got the box and I've got the, the one-up bike racks or bike trays, but I just never put them on. Hold up. Okay, super fast, super loud car was going by. So I'd never put on the one-up um, stands or bike trays. So I'm putting those on today. So. I'll show you what the van looks like right now, and then uh, we'll take it from there, see what happens. Okay, so behind me is the van. So what we got right now is a 2021 Winnebago Revel Sprinter, Sprinter van. The one-up trays go up here. I've got the B2 Carrier, which is that right there. And then uh, the Owl Vans Expedition Box, which is actually made by uh, uh, Al Van makes it, but uh, what is that called? Um, back country? One of those, one of those people makes it for them. So if you've seen a box like this, you're like, wait a minute, that looks familiar. That's because they're in a relationship and they kind of work back and forth together. Theirs is a little bit lighter, is what I understand, the one from Al Vans. So they take that uh, back country, I'm saying that wrong, I'm, uh, I'll have to look it up. But they But they take that bumper or that uh, uh, box and they just kind of modify it a little bit and make it a little bit uh, lighter. So I'm not sure of exactly how much lighter it is, but that's my understanding anyways. So we're going to mount the bike racks up here and I got two of them. So that's the mission. Okay, so this is the bike tray right here. Uh, very well made. I love these one-up things. I mean, everything about it, they're completely solid, good construction. And I think they're gonna, I mean, it, it just seems like just touching it, just first impression, just like, wow, you guys really went all the way out there and really set up a good tray. So I really like that. And uh, let's get this party started. All right, so I don't like to film the whole thing because I think it's, I mean, I personally think it's annoying. Like people that watch this don't wanna watch me. They just wanna see how this is done. So every time I get something interesting, I'll stop and take a video of that. So right now I'm looking at my carrier. I'm gonna bring you in right here. And I think that I'm gonna set it up in such a fashion. So I know a lot of people were worried or there was some conversation about it sticking too far um, on this end, sticking too far. But if you watch, you know, if you're looking down this line, I think I can get mine to go inside the bump, the bump out right right here. So that's what I'm gonna do with that and just position it off to the center like that. And then on this side, it's actually gonna rest on the tire a little bit. By the time I fasten it down, it won't rest on it technically. It'll kind of float above it. I think they've actually, they've actually changed these one-ups because I think the original one used to curve down on this end. So it no longer curves down at all. You can see it's just flat. So the people that have the one that curved down had problems with it clearing a 275 tire, which is what I believe this is. Yep, 275. So, but this clears just fine because it's straight now. So I think I can actually push it off to the left um, a whole bunch and then just have it uh, line up with the van on this side so you don't have that uh, optical um, illusion of it seeming like it's sticking too far out. All right, so I've got the first one kind of mounted up. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things here. So over here, you can see that the metal touches the metal. Um, and then same thing with underneath here or the aluminum, whatever that is. And I'm not a big fan of aluminum on or metal on metal contact. So I went ahead, ideally what I would have wanted is a piece of rubber or some kind of gasket of some sort underneath here, but I didn't have anything like that. But I did have these Velcro, I don't know if you can see that, but I had this, these Velcro straps with a sticky side on one side. So I just stuck that on there. And then now the metal or this aluminum or whatever that is rests on that instead. So that's what I did with that. But anyways, I'm not sure how far it should go. You know, like should it go all the way to the edge or should I have it inside a little bit since I'm gonna be mounting two of them. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna test fit and see what it looks like right now with it where it's at. 
So um, I'm gonna set you up so you can see how I'm gonna do this. So, so I basically just have a ladder and I'm standing up on the ladder. I'm gonna put the bike up there to test fit it. All right, so I think that there is a distance of, uh, we're gonna climb up here together. I think there's uh, an amount that you don't, an amount you wanna offset it inside to avoid that pedal from touching the glass. Cause I mean, it's on there steady or sturdy, but uh, I think still there's a little bit of movement and just, well, you know what, it doesn't really, it doesn't really touch. I think it would take a whole lot of jarring for, for it to actually make contact on there, especially after I cinch these down. I think it would be pretty hard for it to make contact with that. But still, for safety reasons, I'd say you want it more, you want this more out here than you do close to the to the glass over here because that would suck if you kind of hit the brakes in an emergency and then that made contact and just shattered that back window so that's the only catch here so i may move it out just a little bit so that it's got that much more room on there and then up there depending on what kind of bike you have if you've got something with real long handlebars that's the next thing you want to be careful about is that is that going to make contact with the air conditioning unit or whatever else you may have up there so um i think those are the two points i think those are the two areas of concern right there so i'm going to move it in a little bit and then i'm going to mount the other one so also get down these stairs let me show you what this kind of looks like right now so this is the view from the back so like i was saying earlier i positioned it a little bit more to the left or to the driver side so that it wouldn't stick out as much on this side and i think i like that it's almost centered on the back of the van um, when you're looking at it and it's sitting on the tire over here a whole a little bit a little bit more so that's kind of good and i think it just makes it sturdier as well so not really concerned about that and then the view from down here off the pedal hopefully you can see that the view of the pedal is uh it's not it's not going to make contact right i think that's fine right there so um when i move it out a little bit i think that'll help and then as far as this is concerned i don't think this stops me from taking my tire off because i can just uh pull out the bottom a little bit and i think it would still be able to come out but We'll find out the day that I tried to change my tire and that doesn't work. But uh, I think uh, that's too easy. And on that fateful day, right? <laughs> so they kind of used a special um, nut. I'm gonna show you that. So they used a special nut for this section right here. So if you ever had to take this off on the road, I think you should keep the wrench that came with that because um, it's got a little um nipple in the middle um i think that's i think that's really the official term um uh, so it needs a special wrench which has a dip in there that fits over that hopefully that's yep there you go so you always want to make sure you keep this in your toolbox otherwise um if you ever had to take it off you wouldn't be able to without that 
I think it'd be pretty challenging. So unless you had vice grips or something like that, and that would work. But uh, overall, I think that looks good. And I'm gonna move it, like I said, move it out a little bit and then tighten it and call that good. Okay, so here we go. So I'm about to install this uh, second uh, one-up rack and I'm just gonna give you the order of operations before I assemble everything, just in case somebody's wondering exactly how that goes in. I always have problems with washers and nuts trying to figure out what goes where what goes what so this is the way i did it not saying this is the way you should do it or the right way but this is the way i did mine and it looks like it's working all right so what we have over here um, is four long bolts right and then we've got two of these uh, concave um, mounts we've got two plastic washers all right and then we've got these nuts that go underneath. Again, plane going overhead, sorry. Um, what was I saying? So you got these nuts that go underneath, all right? So you will need two pairs of all these things that I've just mentioned. So this is two pairs. So that means four of those, two of these, two of the washers, two of the nuts. And well, <laughs> multiply that by two. What did I just say? That didn't even make any sense you need <laughs> four of the long bolts, all right? Two of these, uh, four washers and four of the nuts. And then this is the tool to mount it on. And then over here, this is optional. This is the lock when you've got your bikes on there to protect them from getting stolen. So this is optional. You don't have to buy this when you buy them, but I would say, why not buy them if you're gonna put your bikes out there and they're expensive, so. Um, that's that. And then over here is the rack itself. So the way it works is, I want to flip this over. And then I'm going to grab one of these long bolts. And then that actually slides in. There's a T-slot over here. And that slides in. And there's a way it goes in, like, it seems like one side is just shaved enough to allow it to slide in there. I kind of had trouble with the first one as well. So I'm just spinning it around until I find a side that kind of fits in. Ouch, like that. And be careful when you're doing that. As you can see, I just cut myself on the edge right there. So, but anyway, this slides in like that, okay? So you'll need two of them. So grab the other one and without injuring yourself this time, try to find the side that fits. And that fits just fine, slide it in. All right, and there's no point in sliding them all the way down there, although you could. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the other two and I'm gonna put them in from over on this side. Again, I'm just rotating it on either side until I, I find a side where it goes in without too much difficulty. And without cutting myself. Ah, and that's bleeding pretty bad. So I may have to pause this and go inside and get some Band-Aid, Band-Aid, okay, so that went in, and that went in easier. I'm gonna pause this for a second, let me go treat this real quick. Okay, it's now the next day, you know, after my near-fatal injury here, I couldn't work anymore yesterday, so I had to take a break. I'm obviously kidding, it's the same day. Anyways, so these go in here, just like that, and then, you will mount that on, on the veil or flip it the other way around, right? Like so. And then sit that on top of the B2 uh, carrier arms like that. And then, let's see here. These go on like so, all right? And then that's followed by, I think, oops, a black washer, which they're kind of plastic. 
All right, so that goes, well, no, sorry. That's followed by the nut with the black washer on it, the plastic one. I chose the plastic one because I don't think it's gonna uh, scuff this aluminum aluminum piece of metal or aluminum piece of metal. I don't think it's gonna scuff this uh, aluminum uh, bracket. All right, so that's why I chose that. But I also have a bunch of these silver washers, uh, the metal ones, and maybe that's what's supposed to go there. I don't know, okay? So I'm using the plastic ones because of the reason I just gave. So that's gonna go on there like that. And that's the order of operations. So I'm gonna take this to the, to the van. I'm gonna flip the camera around just so you can see me struggling with it. It's not that bad actually, but I am gonna turn the camera around so you see that. Okay, so I was talking to myself the whole time. I forgot to hit play or record. So I've got this placed on here now. I left the bolt sticking out and I got it placed up here. This is what I was talking about earlier. I don't want metal to metal contact. So I'm gonna cut out, cut out some of this Velcro. It's got one sticky side. And then I'm gonna stick that to the bottom of this so that this rests on that as opposed to the metal. And then another thing, there's a one-up sticker right about right here. It says one-up, the logo. So I've got that facing back. So you just wanna be, that's how you actually want it because the connections or the little joysticks, <laughs> joysticks, the little um, releases that you use to uh, open these arms up are located on this side. So if you were to spin this around, you wouldn't be able to use it. Okay. I'm gonna cut out that Velcro and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got my Velcro on there now and uh, I'm gonna put this little bracket and it goes right underneath here, like so. And then, of course, I left the nut on that other side. So I'm gonna take this off, balance that on the tire so it doesn't fall off. Okay, grab my nut, black washer, put that on there like that, and then bracket, that goes in there like that, all right. Second set. And you don't want to tighten one over the other. You kind of want to alternate how you tighten them. And what I also did is um, I had a tape measure. Oh, there it is. So what I also did is that I measured the distance to the end on both sides so that it's not in too far on one side versus the other. So it's about, this is about three inches from, not from the arm that swings up, but from the body of the rack or the tray, that's three inches from that to the end of this, all right? So that's just my measurement. You do whatever you want to do. There's no science. I just picked a number and I did that. Um, well, I guess what I did try to do is make sure that there's separation between these two to avoid pedal to pedal contact or whatever other situation because usually when you try to put bikes on a on a like one of those four carrier things you always end up with some craziness with the pedals so that's what I was watching out for when I uh, when I set this up so I wanted as much room here as possible so and who knows I may adjust that in the future but for right now I thought that was a good setup moving the bolts from this side back. All right. 
once again, nut, washer, that, bracket, concave side up. Second one. All right, almost ready to tighten it. So I'm gonna measure those distances again and tighten it. So three inches. Right there. Alternating tightening these so that it goes on even. Oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. Metal to metal contact right here with the bracket. So I'm gonna take the side off. I'll take one side off and just try to swing it around. Because if I take the whole thing off, it's gonna the rack is gonna come up. So what I'm gonna do, and you don't have to do this part, this is just me, right? So I'm cutting a piece of Velcro here. And this is going in the concave part of that bracket so that uh, the metal's not touching the metal. Okay, there may be a little awkward spot in the video. I think it just, I ran out of memory while I was filming this. So anyways, I've got this mounted now. And uh, as you can see, uh, the only special thing about this is to alternate. So you're not tightening one over the other. Otherwise, this is going to end up lopsided. So that's the only catch right there. And what I ended up doing is actually bringing this forward a whole lot more. Because I remembered the reason why I mounted everything so low is that I wanted to maybe put um, either some kind of uh, rotor packs or something like that up here. So I needed more room between the, the bicycle and this uh, carrier. So I went ahead and I moved this in a little bit more. Hopefully that'll be enough room right here. Otherwise I'll have to move it out a little bit more. And then uh, I left this in the same spot. There's about four and a half inches between these two. And I'm thinking that's gonna be enough to mount a second bicycle. Matter of fact, I'm gonna grab one, put it up and see what it looks like. But uh, this is up and it is done. Uh, this also no longer sits over the wheel. Um, not sure how that's gonna, I think it'll be fine because this was never gonna sit over the wheel either, but we'll see how that works. And then uh, another special thing, what was that? Uh, well, we talked about the distance there already, tightening, alternating. And I think that's about it, honestly. It's not a bad job and it doesn't take that long. If I wasn't pausing and recording and everything else and cutting my finger, I think this would have taken all of an hour, you know, and maybe even 30 minutes or 15 minutes if you're owl vans themselves. But um, definitely not a bad job. Anybody can do it. Craziest thing maybe uh, to get up there and mount that. So I just had a little ladder, which is this guy right here. and. I was able to put it up there. Uh, I'm losing daylight here, uh, starting to kind of get dark. So I'm gonna grab that bike, mount it up, see if there's uh, enough daylight to do a video. And then I'll show you what that looks like with two bikes. See if the pedals interrupt each other or interfere with each other, and then uh, we'll take it from there.
All right, so I got that mounted and I think it looks really good and I think it's gonna work great. So, I almost tripped over my ladder. So this is what it looks like now on top of the vehicle. Um, the pedals don't interfere with anything. This is at four and a half inches apart on these two racks and leaving room in here for other shenanigans like uh, rotor packs or whatever. So that's what it looks like. And these are just two regular mount, uh, mountain bikes. I think, uh, what is that? Oh, great, like a 24 inch or whatever the standard size of a mountain bike is 27, uh, 27 inch mountain bikes. So not 29ers or anything like that. So this is the clearances. I kind of struggled a little bit when I was doing this, trying to um, have, well, the handlebars were kind of hitting the seat. So I just had to adjust this so that it went back a whole lot more. So pretty sturdy, not going anywhere. Um, I mean, your car's not gonna be jerking that much you know i kind of i'm using my force to try to move that and you know they move like that but that is not you know it's not a sign that they're not sturdy or anything like that i think i think it's good i think it's a good setup i'm gonna come down here remove my tape and uh see if i can reach out a little bit more so you can see that. So I think I'm pretty happy with the setup. I think this could not have gone any any better. And uh, yeah, one up bike carrier, Alvans B2 bike rack, um, expedition, expedition box. And uh, that's the setup. From the side. That looks like. All right. All right, guys, I could not be happier with the way that turned out. I'm trying to get myself in the shot and the bike rack in the back, but I love that. I think it's set up absolutely fantastic. The bikes are up there, they're secure. I've got tons of room to do the rotor packs in the back like I was talking about, and uh, that's it. All in all, about, what, an hour if you're an amateur to install this maybe? Um, maybe even less if you're anything other than an amateur. If you're all vans, this probably takes you 15 minutes total to install. Super easy to install, anybody can do it. The only catch is having a ladder of some sort so that you can actually get up there. And then that brings me to another thing. I'll have to do a video sometime of uh, what it's gonna actually look like if you didn't have a ladder trying to get the bikes up there or take them down. I think it's almost impossible. Well, not impossible, but it'd be very awkward to try to do that. I'm six foot, uh, a little bit over six foot, and I think I would have trouble trying to get that up and down from there without the ladder. So, But it's getting late and um, I'll have to do that some other time. But uh, hopefully the video helps somebody. I uh, get those done and uh, that's about it. Thank you.